Today we're going to take a look at the Mold Flow Advisor add-in for Autodesk Inventor. To enable the add-in, we have to make sure that the add-in is loaded through our add-in menu system. So we're going to go up to Tools tab. We're going to click on our add-ins command. We're going to find the Autodesk Mold Flow Advisor Design add-in. Make sure it is loaded and select OK. From there, we will now have a new a command on our add-ins tab. Here we can turn the Mold Flow Advisor on and off. Once we turn it on, it's going to start analyzing our part. Now, depending on the complexity of the part, this might take a little bit of time. It also needs to make sure that it is valid. Certain valid uh, geometries include all of our plastic part features we can build with Inventor. What we can't have as a valid uh, model, though, is if it's a multi-body solid. This has to be broken out into individual solid bodies. Now, once we're in here and we can see the add-in's been recognizing our part, we can turn things on like weld lines and sink marks to help visualize what's going on with our plastic model. Normally this is something done in the mold flow package, but this is something we can do ahead of time before we even get to mold flow. This can save our mold flow designer a lot of time if we finish something ahead of time or find errors ahead of time. So here we're viewing our sync marks for the design. And these are all being pulled from the manufacturability tab on the first part of the mold flow advisor add-in. We can also switch over to a indicator level to show different indicators that lead into the overall indicator at the top and also turn on different things like injection toolbar locations and animation toolbars. So let's turn on the injection locators. We can also find these from the little tiny fly out there at the end. So here I can turn on the animation toolbar as well. Once I do that, it will show quick fill animations using multi-core processing of the machine to very quickly show, based on the injection location points, or the injectors, how the material will actually flow into the part. You can see it's actually quite fast. You can also rotate around your model while this is filling to get a better idea of different views of the model. So here we have in our injectors. Now what happens if we want to move or add some of these? Let's go ahead and just adjust the location of these a little bit with our injection toolbar commands. Here we'll add another one. We can add this to the top or we can also put it onto a side. So I'll go over here and grab move again. Move it to the center a little bit more. But in this case what happens if I move it to a side piece? Now this isn't a very good place for an injector but it just goes to show you that the software will recalculate this based on what you've done and also give you another flow analysis based on a new inje injection point. While this may reduce the fill time on the model and the weld lines where I had a high weld line percentage, this actually will cause a lot more problematic uh, issues when I actually create the mold tooling for this. We can also go in here and configure rules for how our meters will read. So we have our manufacturability, we have our cost efficiency, and we also have our uh, material impact. So we can turn on different settings for each one of these. So let's turn on, let's say our draft angle here for our manufacturability. We have our production cost turned on for cost efficiency. Turn on recyclability as well. And once I do that, it's going to recalculate those and return to me in the mini toolbar up here for Mold Flow Advisor the results of those additional tests. Now, it's important to take in consideration that this is a good first pass system, much like the Autodesk Inventor simulation environment, where you want to check, check for very drastic issues first before it gets passed on to higher level analysis. So here we're doing some very high level analysis or as far as uh, quick checking on a plastic part to make sure it makes sense before it gets passed on to someone with perhaps a little bit more experience with plastic molding or someone who might run this with the mold flow advisor uh, full blown package. We can also look at a finished part design of this 
which load up a very quick image here. We can also swing around and view. This will also show our sync marks. So if you can make those out in there, we're actually seeing a real life uh, representation of what this quick simulation will give us. So there's our sync marks on there. We can definitely swing it around, get a better look at it, and then we can close it off when we're done. Now we can also access the help uh, section for Moldflow Advisor here as well. We can also turn it off from this list. There's quite a bit you can do in there. This is basically telling me to use the on-off switch at the add-ins at the very top of the screen. Personally, I like to unload the add-in when I'm done using it, just in case someone else were to open up a model, or just in case I didn't catch it and I opened up a model. I'm still pulling a Moldflow license when I do this. 